right, and welcome back. This is going to be the last part, I believe, unless we run into something very interesting, uh, of the DOFR A127 triple voltage controlled resonance filter demonstration. Uh, if you watched any of the last three parts, uh, you've seen kind of an overview of the module, uh, little demonstrations here and there of not only the factory settings that are built into this device, uh, that is the triangle, LFOs that can be modulating the cutoff frequency of each of the bandpass filters, but also we did some external modulating with the DOFR A140, uh, the DOFR A145, and in the last segment we actually did a little variation on the patch that's found in the manual for uh, dual sample and hold. We did one sample and hold to filter one, one sample and hold to filter two, and then we kind of changed the modulation source going into uh, Filter 3, I think at one point we had a saw, and then we went over to the A140 going into filter 3. Uh, we listened to a couple different types of sources going into it, so hopefully by now you've gotten a good uh, kind of overview of uh, low frequency sources going in to modulate the cutoffs of the frequency. But this time around, we're going to do something very, very different. We're going to do audio rate modulation to each one of these filters. Uh, because these, uh, according to the manual, say that they are very sensitive to uh, audio rates, so you can get some very nice thick distortions going into these bandpass filters. So to start out with, uh, let's get our drum loop queued up, and uh, we may just kind of vary it here. I'm going to start with the, uh, the hi-hat riff, is what I call it, uh, and I believe that's playing now, so now I just have to patch that little guy in and here comes my audio source and I patch that in. Let me bring these down that way we don't have any uh, affected signal quite yet. So here we go, patching in the drum loop. There we go. And uh, now I'm going to be using the A145 as an audio source. So I'm just going to bring this into the high range. That's the audio range. And I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. I don't really know what that's going to sound like, but let's just see what we see. So I'm going to bring my CV amplitude all the way down. I'm going to start with just filter one. I'm going to take a uh, saw wave right out of the A145 and feed it right into here. We don't hear anything yet because I'm not actually feeding any audio into the filter yet. So now I'm going to bring this up. Some in there, not quite yet because my amplitude of my external signal is not up, so let's bring that up. So there we go, a little bit nice crunchy kind of distorted sound. Let's hear what that sounds like without the original coming back into it. Pretty nice. I'll change the frequency cutoff over here. Or not the frequency cutoff, but the frequency of my uh, audio rate source going in. Okay, I like that. I'm not 100% happy with the resonance setting though, so I'm going to bring that down a little. Kind of like almost a bit crush type sound. Oh, that one actually does not do anything right now. Just remember that. Note to self. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that going in there right now. So, let's see if we can't get a little more audio rate modulation. Uh, for my second audio source, I'm going to still bring that same LFO in. But this time I'm gonna bring a triangle in. We're going to feed it into filter two. There we go. And bring this up a little bit. Bring my resonance down a little. Let's bring up the original a little bit. Too much there. At 
this point it's just kind of finding where you like the way it sounds. Let's actually bring up audio in level. And you can really start to hear it distort now. So let's keep those two being modulated at audio rate and then actually just bring in the third filter and we'll leave that one actually being modulated by the built-in triangle LFO. So we're going to bring up that filter. Alright, so we have some nice little audio rate modulation going on. out the original. Oh, that's nice right there. And I'm a little more fond of the slow rate on the triangle that's built in. some of the original. Okay, so let's do a little change up here. Uh, let's maybe do a triangle wave, we'll unpatch that. Bring in a sine wave. frequency up of our LFO. Let's bring the audio all the way up. Might be getting some very hefty distortion here. Again, does not control anything. Okay, I'm gonna unpatch that, and we're gonna listen to a second uh, variation of that with a different loop over here. And I have kind of a phantom tone going on here. I think that's just this being fit into there because my filter levels are all the way up. Uh, so let me actually. Let's see, what am I going to do to eliminate that? Let me just bring down my audio levels. There we go. Okay, so let me get my second loop queued up. And we're going to go back to the drum and bass type loop. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that one, then you're going to hear it here shortly. These are loops I just programmed. So here's the, uh, the dry signal. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Um, now, there is some filtering going on here because uh, there's actually, let's see, this, or no, actually there's no filtering because the audio levels are all the way down. So let's bring some of that back in. Take out the original. So we have only affected signal. Get some very nice crunchy sounds. Then I can adjust my frequency on my uh, audio source. Or if I wanted to get crazy, I could just switch it over to medium. That's already pretty fast, uh, at least in the LFO section, so you're going to get more an LFO type sound. That's something you would hear coming out of here.
done. I'm just doing this as an experiment. The top part of the medium setting over here is actually still within uh, audio rate, but high is the one that's definitely an audio rate where you start getting some really nice, crunchy distortion sounds coming out of here. Let's bring back some of my original. Okay, so I think you got that in your ears. Let's uh, unpatch this. And then we'll, to wrap up here, we'll listen to the, uh, the synth riff that I had. So I started up my synth riff, and I'm going to patch it in. And let's just go right into that. Try a little bit of an inverted song. with the original coming back. So only affected signal, let's just listen to filters two and three. Bring back filter one, take out filter two. Bring out filter two, take out filter three. And you get the idea. But just tons and tons of possibilities here. the easiest way to unpatch that uh, very quickly. So I'm going to start doing a little cleanup here. And uh, I believe we're going to wrap up this uh, this segment here on the Dofer A127. Just want to do a brief demonstration, make sure I left, you know, no stone unturned, so to speak. Um, now, there is an alternative way, or there's actually several different adjustments that you can make to this module, just for your own information, in case you're curious about this. Um, in the manual, it does outline a process by which you can change the behavior of this module. Because right now, we've been listening to it. It's three separate bandpass filters. 
Uh, there is a jumper that can be adjusted inside the module that can then turn this into three separate uh, low pass filters, 12 decibel, I believe, um, that you can adjust to it. I'm not going to do a demonstration of that, uh, at least not, uh, not this time around. Uh, maybe a little bit later, maybe a few months down the road. Something like that might do it. Um, but uh, just wanted you to know that that's also a possibility. There's also a modification uh, via a jumper, I believe, as well, that uh, can change the behavior of one of these two dials. Uh, and I don't remember, it's not coming to me right now, which one uh, the jumper actually affects. But if you check out the manual and the product page, uh, it'll give you some very useful information about how you can use this in a in slightly different way if you want to. Uh, we've just done the standard mix out um, in these demonstrations, but as you can see over here, there's three separate outputs. So, I mean, you can imagine how many different things that you can use this for. Uh, you can send this out to another mixer, you can send this out to uh, maybe another filter, um, all kinds of possibilities going on here. Great, great filter that I've enjoyed a lot. Uh, so, thanks for making uh, this filter out there, Mr. Dofer. And uh, let's see, I'm not sure what demonstration we're going to be actually doing next time around, uh, but hopefully you'll stay tuned and uh, keep your eyes out for it. Um, at any rate, hope you enjoyed this, found it useful, got an idea of what the capabilities of this module are. Um, and uh, hope to see you next time. Keep on patching out there. And uh, we'll see you soon.